Hey, my name's Kristen and I am the Broken Masterpiece and today we're gonna try something different. We are gonna take this coffee table that I had in my living room, I have already stripped it down and we are gonna add an acrylic pour to give depth and dimension and character to it. Here's your basic setup. You need some acrylic paints, whatever colors you wanna use, or mineral paints. I used Dixie Bell's Cactus for my green in this. You're gonna want a mixing medium. I use Floetrol, but I'll show you some other kinds you can use. And then some silicone and plastic cups and mixing stirs. Now to kick off our mixing, that's basically what you're going to be doing for the majority of the time you're going to be mixing. So here are some Floetrol substitutes. You can get Flood at Lowe's or Home Depot though, and I highly recommend it because it doesn't change the consistency of what you're doing. It doesn't change your paint color. It's a really good medium to where you're going to get your paint very flowy. And I'm going to say flowy because I do this by look. Yes, a common acrylic ratio is one parts paint to two parts Floetrol, but I do it by how it flows. I want it to flow like a top coat, like a polycrylic. I want to pick my stir up and I want it to be pouring off. Not too fast, but not clumping. Now I used two different kinds of gold paint on this. They were really thick, so I had to use a ton of Floetrol to get it even pourable. Um, and in this case, I really didn't have to cut the cups. Uh, I wish I wouldn't have. Leave the cups as is. You're going to actually mix more paint than what you need, but it's better to have more than what you need than to have to mix it really fast while your paint is already flowing on the table. Now all paint is going to have some roughness about it, whether it's settled on the bottom or whether it just has stringing things in it. I highly recommend strainers before you actually pour it into your mixing cup. Um, as I'm doing this, I'm adding the flow trowel because I need it to flow through the strainer enough to be able to pour into my mixing cup. Now all of that was done at two times the speed, so realize how much time that took. Now I'm using Dimethicone, it's actually in a hair product, and this hair product's really pure, so it has mostly just straight Dimethicone in it. It's just like silicone, but I highly recommend getting 100% silicone from Amazon. Um, I'm putting about um, five to 10 drops in each of these cups. Again, I'm doing it by look. I am not a perfect measurer because I've been doing this a while, but if you want a perfect measure, do about five to 10 drops per cup. Once you get that silicone mixed in and your paint is strained and it's all mixed up with the flow trial, it's all flowing, it's ready to be poured into your mixing cup. Now, as you can see, I'm gonna start with my white. I want that to be the main base and I'm going to pour it into the bottom of the cup. Then I'm gonna add the other paints next. And when you pour them on top of each other, some of them are gonna be a little bit heavier. They're gonna sink to the bottom. And it's just, it's a creative process. So you don't, it doesn't have to be perfect. They don't all have to layer on top of each other. Um, but you can add more or less of whatever colors that you want to see. Now the reason I use flow trial instead of water or the distilled alcohol, which you can find online, there's other cheaper ways to do this, um, it actually creates large cells in the acrylic pour even if you don't use the silicone. So I add the silicone in just to create some smaller cells, um, but it doesn't also affect the paint quality and the pigment like water will. Um, it improves the flow of it, you get such a smooth application, it increases the paint adhesion to whatever surface you're going on, which is canvas or wood um, and it prevents cracking as well so as this is drying you'll see when it's dry there's no cracking at all um, and it just allows the dry time so as I'm trying to cover this entire surface that I'm working on um, I can get it to flow all the way through without starting to stick too much and dry here comes the fun part. You take your cup, you take it to your table, and you are going to flip it upside down. Yes, it's going to splatter like this. You're already gonna see the cells in there, and you're going to lift it up and move that cup around. Now, realizing I needed twice as much as I had in this cup right here, so I quickly went over, I mixed another cup, and so while this is spreading out, I, and it has that flow trail, so it's not gonna dry, quickly at all, I can go and mix another cup of the paint that I already had. When you are doing a paint pour that is flowing off of the edges, you want to create way more paint than you need. But for this table, I am having it stay in a space. So I almost want to create less paint than what I need and have a little bit extra on hand to add to it. Should I need to fill the space because I don't want too much. I want it to be able to sit here and not um, overflow past the tape. 
For this table, since it had two sections, I did one side at a time where I was picking up one side of the table, letting it flow, moving on to the corners, moving on to the other side. And as you do this, you were gonna get a different variety of the patterns and the cells as you go. It's really fun to watch. I would encourage you to get your kids out there to enjoy the process. Every single one of the spots that don't have paint in them or create like a little hole, they will all get filled because that paint is self-leveling and so it's gonna flow around, it's gonna fill in those gaps and fill in those spaces. It's at this point that you get your butane torch out. You're gonna go over it very lightly and not too close to the surface. What it's gonna do is help the silicone rise to the tops to create more cells and all the bubbles also heat up and rise to the top and pop so that they can dry without bubbles in it. One of the reasons I love using gold and silver as an accent is because it usually floats to the top, all the little sparkles in it. And so as you go around the table, you can see these sheens and little strips of gold. Every pour you do is gonna be different. Sometimes you're gonna have more cells, sometimes you're gonna have more of a flow. Every time you do it, you get better. And so keep doing it, keep taking the time. Um, yes, putting it on furniture is more permanent, but it's not gonna be perfect, but what it's gonna be is a work of art. It's gonna be one of a kind that a client gets to take home and put in their house. Now I have a few clients that have pieces of mine with acrylic pours on them, and they say they get compliments every time somebody comes over because it's such an accent piece for a room. I have a piece myself in my own living room. It's a double pour where it's got a place on top for the pour and then it's got a shelf below and I did a pour with gold, white, and silver on both of them and it's such a fun little pop of color for that room. Now, when your piece is drying, you need to have it in a room where there's not gonna be a lot of dust flying. You want it in a clean space where no one's going to be touching it because that paint is going to be wet for seven days. It will start drying on the outside and then move towards the inside. And so it's wet, you cannot touch it for a minimum of seven days. Now we get to let this dry. So I'm going on vacation. Well, I'll come back to it in seven days. I had added a white stain to this coffee table and so I'm going over it with the Stellar Shield by Lily Moon to give it a satin finish. Now the difficult part with top coats on silicone in paint is that the silicone does not want to adhere to anything. And so minimum dry time is seven days, but I would honestly suggest that you give it closer to 10 days because this is what happened when I put a gloss top coat over the paint. It was dry to the touch, but that silicone hated it and wanted to spread it away from any silicone pockets. I had to sand that layer down. I tried to brush it out, but even so it just looked streaky and I really didn't like the top um, being gloss, so I went over it with some 180 grit sandpaper. I tried using the satin top coat and it was about the same thing and so you know what worked the best was a spray can of polycrylic. It's the blue can from Home Depot and Lowe's. The spray can in satin worked beautifully and the silicone adhered to it just fine. So just a little tip and trick if you are having trouble with your top coat and I had to get this done because I was having back surgery the next day, this little can of Midwax polycrylic made this perfect and just the softness that I wanted it to have for a coffee table. Now this thing is durable, you can place cups on it, water on it, it wipes clean and it's going to be gorgeous and add just a spot of art in the middle of someone's living room. There's an app called Photo Room and now I have the pro version but I asked this app to create for me a background with couches in it, a plant in the corner or a luxurious living room and it took the photos that I had taken again in my garage and it put my table in there so that I could have photos to post it online. So I hope you like it. Please comment below what you think and if you would ever try this at home.